Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, there comes a time in every film photography YouTuber's career where they need to shoot a bunch of expired film and then talk about it because people online enjoy watching others get hurt. So this is that. Expired film is kind of synonymous with shitty film, but if you pledge your life to Jason's expired film rulebook slash cult that I'm about to introduce you to, you may just have some luck. People only really shoot expired film for like two reasons probably. One, they like the look of it for some reason, or two, they found a good deal on it. Either way, and you probably already know this, you can extend the life of your roll of film past expiration by doing the, you know, Jabba Han Solo thing and freezing it. That's what I do with all my film. Just be sure to thaw it out for like an hour or two before you shoot it. Oftentimes you'll actually find rolls of expired film for sale that don't explicitly say how they were stored. So in general, you can just go ahead and assume they never got the frozen carbonite treatment over the years. What then? Well, color negative, black and white, and color positive all behave quite differently when expired. So let's just start with the most popular one, color negative. The most common thing to do is to add one stop of light for every 10 years that the film is expired. You've probably heard of this rule before. For example, if a roll of Portra 400 expired in 2014, 10 years ago, shoot that roll at 200 ISO instead of its box speed of 400 ISO. If that same roll of film instead expired in 1974, 50 years ago, then add five stops of light, i.e. shoot the Portra 400 at like 12 ISO. 400 to 200, 200 to 100, 100 to 50, 50 to 25, 25 to about 12. That's five stops. Honestly though, if you're shooting a roll that's 50 years old, you should probably just get down on your knees for praying, not the not the other thing. And beg for mercy because that roll is probably fucked. Gotta say, this rule actually works pretty well overall. If for nothing else, it's because color negative film handles overexposure a lot better than underexposure. But let's test this theory in the field real quick at California's own Infertile Crescent, Mojave Desert. Here's some Kodak Varicolor 400 that expired in December of 1993 that was sent in to me by Michael F. Thanks, Michael. Expired in 93, color negative film, don't know how it was stored, three decades ago, three stops. There's a good chance this will not turn out. So yeah, three decades ago means I shot this roll at 50 ISO, which is not very high. Yo, those are some big ass footprints. I don't think that's a dog. Fifteenth of a second. As you can see, I still got an image and they aren't half bad. This shot is even something I'd consider to be a banger, you know, aside from the weird marks that I got in the upper corner in some of the photos. I guess that's to be expected from 30 year old film. I mean, shit, I'm 32 years old and I got weird marks that I can't explain. Okay, so there's one more thing to consider with expired color negative film that most don't talk about. Higher ISO film, I'd say anything above 400 ISO, technically expires at a faster rate. This type of expired film is certainly less common, so it can be kind of hard to judge. I've always found that adding half of a stop of light per step of ISO above 400 will do the trick, you know, on top of the one year one stop rule. Getting kind of tricky now, huh? As Avril Lavigne once famously said about expired film, why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? Here's a quick example. You have some Portra 800 that expired in 2004, 20 years ago. You'll want to add the two stops of light to account for those two decades since its expiration. So now you're shooting it at 200 ISO. Now 800 ISO is one stop faster than 400. So add half of a stop of light on top of that. In the end, I would consider shooting this hypothetical roll of expired Portra 800 at either 125 or 160 ISO. Let's test that out. Here's a roll of Kodak PMZ Pro 1000 that expired in April of 1999, sent in by Kyle L that I guess he looted from an old hospital freezer. Whatever. Thanks, Kyle. Hope you're considering going to that huge Kyle meetup later this year. Expired in 99, ISO 1000, color negative. 99. That was like 25 years ago. Add two stops, would be 250, and then add half a stop. So shoot it at 200. Maybe, maybe I'll shoot it at 160 just to be safe. Let's do 160. Anyway, 
point. I'd say 160 ISO was about the right call. These photos turned out pretty good. I'd never heard of PMZ 1000 before, but I found it to be pretty saturated. Of course, it is difficult to judge the qualities of a film stock when your only samples with it are expired, but ah, f it, I'll do it anyway. This is my favorite one. Clearly someone, or maybe even Kyle himself, has been here as evident by the punched holes in the drywall. Cool. Not to toot my own horn, because I already do that every night, but two for two so far. Let's venture into the wonderful world of expired black and white film. I've been told by several people who probably know more than me, or maybe not after all, it is the internet, that black and white film in general expires slower than color negative film. And in my own travels and experience shooting it, I'd have to agree. So for expired black and white film, I simply apply more or less the same rules as expired color negative film, but on a more expanded timeline. Basically, I add one stop of light for every 20 years of expiration. Let's test it out in the field with some Panatomic X, which sounds like some shit that would heal you in Fallout 4. I can't remember where I got this stuff, so whoever gave it to me, thank you. You're a legend in your own right, and if I had the power, I would probably knight you. Anyway, this old ass dusty roll expired in May of 1972 and is about 32 ISO at box speed. So we're looking at some uh, extreme exposure compensation here to bring this shit back from the dead. How many decades? That's five decades. Yeah, but it's black and white, so it's a little different, and it's low ISO. I'm thinking ISO 10 or 12 would probably be fine. Try it. Alrighty. Okay, I've decided I'm basically shooting it at ISO 8. I did not have high hopes for this stuff. I did shoot some Panatomic X in 8x10 a couple years ago, and it certainly had some issues. Don't we all, though? That's why therapy exists. Or, you know, alcohol. Anyway, these shots turned out good. They even definitely had shadow detail. So I'm guessing this roll probably could have been shot at maybe 16 or I don't know, maybe even box speed. Perhaps it was just really well stored over the years or maybe the low ISO kept it intact. I don't know. That's the thing, you never really know. And so it's kind of just safer to overexpose. That's why this rule is the way that it is. Okay, cool. Now that we've covered black and white, onto E6 slide film. It's basically this is the one that I would personally avoid buying and shooting in just about any expired state, unless it was like super recent. As far as I know, there really isn't a ton you can do to resurrect it. I've shot a lot of expired color positive and I'd say it's like a 50% success rate and anything below a 90% suck rate isn't really worth it most of the time. I have no tips for expired E6 film. You basically just have to shoot it at box speed and pray to whatever film god that you subscribe to on YouTube that the emulsion holds out. Anyway, when I was in Atlanta for the KEH Darkroom and Beers and Cameras event, I was gifted an unopened 50 rack of 4x5 Fuji Probia 100 that was of unknown quality, it expired in 2008, and was likely not cold stored. Like I said before, there isn't really much you can do for this film except shoot it at box speed. So that's what I did, right next to this wall covered in questionable fluids. What do you know? Both sheets came out just fine. Here are some examples of how bad expired slide film can look. In some rare and dire emergency situations, you can crank the dehaze slider on your scans in Lightroom to restore fogged slide film, but I'll be honest with you, most of the time it just looks bad. Anyway, before I close out this video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, for their ongoing support. Need a website fast? Let me introduce you to your new best friend, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to truly unlock your creative potential. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates or get started building the website of your dreams with something called Blueprint AI, a new feature in Squarespace's building toolkit. Blueprint AI is an automated way to generate the foundation of your website by answering a few simple questions at the get-go and letting the algorithm figure out the rest for you. With 1.4 billion potential design combinations and a brand new 
fluid engine, a sleek new way to drag and drop elements of your website wherever at your disposal, you can build the website of your dreams faster than ever before. If you ever get around to selling products, Squarespace even has the infrastructure to open up shop right there on your own website with all the modern amenities available for customers to purchase items like credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, and even Afterpay and Clearpay. And best of all, if you run into any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help forums. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So what did we learn today? Probably not a whole lot. Every roll of expired film that I shot in this video turned out okay luckily. And I do firmly believe that if you follow the rules outlined in this video slash cult indoctrination propaganda, then you too might find success. Of course, the best thing you can do for yourself when it comes to expired film is simply not shoot it at all, like abstinence.